So we've got here hops. So these are doing fairly well. We've got more bananas over there. The pineapple over here. Blackberries, pomegranates, mint, figs. Here you see some dragon fruit. Like here's a real good looking one. Oh. We've got here, this is uh, a hops neo-mexicana. On the plants here, I'm watering them freehand with a hose, but if you see the pipes coming off, it drains back to a tank over there, and it's got a float switch in it, so when it fills up, that pumps it back up onto the dragon fruit plants. So it gets a double use out of them. So what I do is I've got a little bit of water coming in and then the electric pump to where I can start the, the pump going. So, but you can see the pomegranates coming up and, you know. Do you think that, that Los Angeles people could be doing this more? Oh yeah, we've got lots of sunlight. So it's almost over abundance of sunlight. You have to put shade cloth up to moderate. You can see how this is a real dark blue. In the full sunlight, it gets very hot. So the ground would build up heat. So that's where I developed the hula skirts to put on the buckets. This one, she's not as modest, but she should keep her dress up. It keeps the bucket from getting the heat build up. I like trying to get the system going, and if I can improve it, you know, I'm a mechanic, I figure I can tweak the system to where it runs good. These are mint plants. What I do is say, I water this, it drains down to the table, and you see the pipes on the bottom and it connects into this barrel which is interconnected there so a lot of that is recirculated you know like a car mechanic you're trying to tune the engine to get the best results out of what you have so i'm trying to tune my agricultural engine to get the best results so you have the little hops cones grow in there so use hops to make beer. Right. But they're not using this hops to make beer. Well, well, they're making enough for a novelty brewer. They call it rooftop ale. <laughs> We're getting the, the hops to grow. It should be in a more Bavarian, Washington State type environment, but it will grow here if you give it the right food. Interesting, it's the food. Yeah, okay. well, the nutrient base, plenty of nitrogen, you know, basically you're throwing it in here. What, wait, what is it? This is my uh, duck manure compost. And you just dump it in here, shake it, and it drops in on your top dressing. So that's what gives it the greenery, you know. This is almost like terraforming, you know, basically you're building an environment but yeah, I'll bring the manure and fertilizer processed from the house. So you've got your nitrogen source right there. And that helps, you know, get the greenery growing. Without the nitrogen input, it's not going to grow. Do you think that, so. that when you're in a city, you have to be smarter about how you garden? Yeah, you don't have as much room, whereas if you're out in a rural area compared to urban, you don't have as much real estate here available. And with this, your container gardening, you've got the roof, but you have to bring your own soil. So when you came here, what did this roof look like? Flat and nothing. <laughs> so they weren't using the roof? No. It's a little backyard, just hooking up the plumbing. I've got another hundred feet of tubing there to make the drainage system. This is the older compost. That's the shredded coconut husks to drain the water through. The drainage holes let the water drain into the bottom and out the drain pipe on the side. 
Right now what I'm doing is getting the plumbing going for the return system. So all of the drain water will come over here and go to a sump. So that sets the pump on and off. You can see the irrigation. And so that'll, you know, pump into the system to irrigate the plants. Well, this one is growing on my compost. So this one has my compost soil mix underneath, like here. The potential, if you keep giving it the food, it'll grow well. We've been operating here for the past two years. And when we started, we were looking for a way to get rid of our spent grain but without having to throw it away. And so we placed an ad on Craigslist and that's where we found Ray. Ray was actually the first respondent. This is what the grain looks like coming out. Ray told us that he turns spent grain into compost and uses it for other things. And so we began a relationship with him. I got my helpers trying to help themselves. When I'm in the heavy grain mode, I'll put in about two, three gallons of grain in each one of these beds every day and keep working it in. The brewery, what happened was I'm doing composting on a continuous basis for around here, you know, for in the garden and trying to get expanding it. So I'd look at Craigslist for compost capabilities. They've got like orange peels. So now I've gone around to juice bars. Kale, carrot tops, apples, and then the coffee grounds. It's about 2% nitrogen, so it's really good for the composting. Also, you know, the carrots and the orange pulp. So before, like when I was doing a truckload of tomatoes and cucumbers and stuff, I'd have like a hundred gallons of water juice to dispose of. So now with this material, it is really good. Also, it helps the chickens out. They really love this stuff. This stuff I don't compost directly. I put it out for the chickens to go through at first and then they do their thing with it. A couple different uh, styles of composting. This one here is, it has quite a bit of the coffee and stuff like that in it. With the coffee grounds that goes Pretty quickly it starts uh, developing the mycelium for the mushrooms and stuff. With this it's like a slow release tablet whereas you get a really good growth out of it and it continues for an extended period of time. That was a orphaned grapefruit tree. This is the Fuyu, it gives you persimmons this big. Okay, that one is a seedling of Valencia orange. I've got to pick out a tree and stick it in or I'll probably put in another citrus. They're nice and hardy. This is an olive tree. I haven't had too many olives on it yet. It's still fairly young. So maybe we'll get into doing olives. This one is a Cara Cara orange. This one is not that old a tree. This is also a seedling. This is pretty much a pomelo. These are small right now. They'll be bigger than the grapefruits on the other side. This is a pomelo orange cross. It's a seedling from growing in the yard. So this has the potential of being like this. This is a Valencia orange, and it's like constantly oranges on it. It just gives and gives. Back in the day, Los Angeles was... It's heavy into important. citrus. Yeah, you know, nice thing about this area, it's got a nice Mediterranean climate, and it's just a few minutes away, like two exits from downtown LA. So it's, it's pretty much the middle of the city. 
but quite urban for what yeah. you're doing. <laughs> you're um, trying to pack a lot in there, right? Yeah, I'm trying to double deck because I don't have a lot of footprint area. So in order to get more on there, you start stacking up. We've got apple trees in this area. Washington Naval Orange, Bears Lime, uh, Sweet Potatoes, we've got it in a ferro cement structure. It's about an inch thick. So, so are you able to use the sidewalk like this? <laughs> they they haven't run me off. If I had to, I could take and turn it on its side, roll it around and bring it in the yard. This is an avocado. It's a seedling from Little Cotto. There was like three or four seedlings that I put in here and I've cut a lot of the other ones off that were more susceptible to the mold on the leaves, like the blight. I've been using the uh, duck juice on it. I have the extract that I get every day, so it gets a ration of the nitrogen solution. And this is uh, Oro Blanco grapefruit, and it gives good size fruit. And yeah, it does well. Again, we're feeding it the nitrogen solution from the duck pen. In there, there's a bucket buried into the ground. It's an open bottom five gallon bucket. So it has manure and compost and stuff put in there. So I come and fill it up with water and it percolates through and it makes a tea in place. In situ, as they call it, on site, you know. You can see what it does for the citrus. Um, how long How long did some of these take to grow? And did they grow faster because of what you're doing? Or because of the, um, the citrus use? grows a lot quicker with heavy nutrients. They grow like crazy. <laughs> so the neighbors, I've kind of introduced them. I've got them hooked on that. I'm, I'm the pusher <laughs> for the nutrients for their trees and stuff. I, I give them the good shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is your front yard? Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't leave any space uncovered. Yeah, right. Lots of places where I'm building the soil. So this one's pretty much finished compost. This is pretty much straight duck manure sitting in there. I dump the water on it so it helps feed the trees. These are full of uh, compost and potting soil. You know, the same way here. This is a, a plank going across for the ducks where they can come across. My guy's coming from the, the jacuzzi area over to the, the feeding section. Yeah, they seem healthy. Uh, yeah, they get plenty to eat, varied. Well, if you want to come over this way. Why ducks? Very nutritious eggs, good-sized eggs. So you can see the grain that they're eating. They go through about uh, 60 gallons, three 20-gallon trash cans a week. So they get well fed. This is the way I preserve the, the grain. This one I've pretty much used up. What I have is this grain. This is one day's meal. You're buying a lot of grain then. No, I get it for free. I raise hops on the top of a brewery. I take three trash cans a week. You can see this is the, the grain. It's preserved in beer. You don't want to be around this when it starts going off. Uh, bacteria get bacteria into it, it. Yeah. and it just goes foul. And with the boards on top of the grain, it's like when you're doing sauerkraut or pickles, you put the plate on top of the pickles and it holds it down below the brine. Well, instead of brine, we're using beer. 
it's the dregs of the end of a brew and they dump it down the drain. So what I did is I came and got like about 10 gallons of that sludge that comes off of the bottom with all the yeast. As long as you keep the grain underneath the beer, you can keep it, the grain for a month and it won't go bad so you can stockpile so I've got like this one with about 40 gallons or more of grain in there and then the same way over here with another 40 or 50 gallons of grain and the beer keeps the grain preserved so you stockpile because how did you come up with this solution well experimenting you know it's it's my own technique up here, this is kind of a recirculating area, like that's the duck bath area. But this was day old water, and what I'd done is pump the water over into this side. So it's a, just about 500 gallons of water down below here. And so the water is a little bit cloudy because of the duck bath water that goes in here. But what I do is there's a pump inside here and it's bringing the water over to the spearmint. Okay, what it also is good is crayfish food. The mint goes all year long so you can, okay, if you look in right there you can see the crayfish. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. There's dozens of them in here. That's another addition into the circuit here. They eat I throw the mint in here and when I've got more tender grape leaves I'll throw the grape leaves in there but the thing that holds them through the winter is the mint leaves so inside here is also crayfish of different sizes but and why crayfish well they're like a bottom feeder you know they're the cleanup crew what the fish don't eat and you know comes from the ducks and this and that they, they filter will. feed that material so they help break it down so in this system i have the water sitting in there for a week and the ducks are doing their thing inside of it so it gets a tint by the end of a week it's starting to turn green so that's when I put the pump inside and have it uh, circulate into here and then I refill that, get it cleaned up and, and then they get to work on it for another week. So this one here has siphon tubes that brings the water from here into here, siphons over into here and as the pump from this one pumps it up onto the mint it flows back down through here and in there I've got a very fine filter sack that is capturing the leaves and the bigger particulate and help bringing it out of the system so it'll you know just keep circulating and in a couple of days it'll be fairly clear but then you take and dump the material in there again and it clouds it up but but the big point is that you're getting nutrients. Right. And, and you can see oh, wow. what it does wow. for this one. It's, it's got roots and stuff coming out of the bottom of the bucket onto the sand. And it has like a, its own little nutrient rich creek running by. So these are ripening faster than the ones in the backyard. Yeah. Fabulous. So you're getting, is it nitrogen or what are you getting? Well, you're the... getting nitrogen and minerals because the ducks are eating a lot of grain. They're not uh, real well on not pooping in the bath water. <laughs> <laughs> so it gets pretty rich in nitrogen. Do you eat crayfish? Can you eat these crayfish? Yeah, but I've got to get the system a lot bigger. You know, like okay. I've got a couple dozen right now. If I had a good meal, well, <laughs> it'd take a while to build back up. <laughs> but they are a good part of the system to develop. There's a lot of worms and stuff mixed in. 
So they're rummaging through. You get maggots in the manure and the chickens will be scratching through it, getting the maggots and, and stuff like that. So uh, as far as um, pest control, you, is there any system you put in place? Chickens and poultry you have mite problems, you know you can have problems so what i've got for that is a solarizer so once or twice a week i'll take this the nest box out and put it in a solarizer so what i have is the blue plastic which helps absorb the heat and there's two nest boxes sitting underneath the clear plastic so it's a hot house so you take and put the box inside there solarize it for a couple days and then you swap out and you keep doing that and it keeps the pests under control. These are strawberries. Instead of strawberries, I could really call them gravel berries because strawberries, they mulch them with straw. I've gone to where I just mulch them with rocks. You know, when the fruit comes and lays on the soil, you have a problem with mold or losing the fruit. Now, if you put the gravel on there, it's really easy to keep the fruit from getting rotted and, and it keeps the moisture in the soil. And these are the different strawberries. What I do is this one has the holes in the cup, but this one retains a little bit of moisture. So you don't have to water it as often. So I've got a, a multi <laughs> multitude of these trays where I've got sand inside the containers. And so you, when you're watering, it retains the moisture on the little cups and you don't dry out as fast. So I've got more of these trays. There's a berm of sand so I can fill this up but it doesn't run out right away. It takes hours for it to trickle down. So I'll have it running into this bucket. This one, I haven't taken the mosquito eggs out yet, but I've got a net. So every couple days, I'll come and pull the, the eggs off and give them to the mosquito fish. And then this, what I'll do is take the whole bunch of water from here and dump the whole lot up in here so any eggs or mosquitoes that are starting in here will filter through the sand and it'll drip back into the bucket and i've got some mosquito fish in here just a few to keep the mosquitoes down and again this is the water that gets pumped from the other side it's recirculating the water from the front porch so you're able to use a lot less water? Yeah. Okay. How big is your yard? Uh, I think it's like 50 feet by about 90 some. I'd have to get the tape measure out. So to, not very big? No. And it has two houses on one lot, so it's kind of limited in the, the square footage you got available for growing. This water gets recirculated back to the irrigation water. The same way any water that's dumped on here goes down to this lower area and then it drops into a hole with a bucket in it and a sump pump in it. And so when it collects in the sump pump area, it pumps it up to the little fish pond up on top. So you recirculate, you know, the water. And like I say, this is the Oro Blanco grapefruit, and this is like a lemonade flavored one. As far as the taste of things you eat versus the things you buy, do, do you perceive the difference? Well, the citrus and stuff, it's a full flavor. It's quite juicy. You don't eat any sugar. It's no, great. it's sweet. <gasps> yeah. So you're getting back to what L.A. was known for early on, right. all the fruit. Oh, and yeah, right. We've gone to a hotter, drier, you know, climate. The winters used to be wet. Now you have the pests that are associated with that dry, you know, weather. But this is still... 
and yeah. to be able to go outside your house and mm -hmm. pick a piece of fruit when you want. Did your wife ever want to have a flower garden or anything else that, you know, did she ever complain about not? Well, not too badly. <laughs> How much are you able to produce in your yard? In general, are you able uh, to produce all the food, well, the fruits we, no. you eat? Fruit. Fruits, yeah. We, you know, we have plenty of citrus and stuff like that. Do you think that more people should do this? Yeah, if they have areas to grow. The trouble is, is you either have to have a nitrogen source or a chemical fertilizer. The plants do not go with nothing. You know, it's like making stone soup. Like the guy says, I can make stone soup, but it'd taste a lot better if we had a little bit of meat to put in the yeah. pot. <laughs> and you know, well, it needs a little bit something else in this. And after you put the pork chop and the bones and this and everything, the stone soup tastes great. <laughs> So it's a, whole, it's a whole system. <laughs> right. So I can throw the grain and the spoils that are coming out of the duck pen and the chicken area, and it feeds the trees. I gave the trees a haircut. Now you've got a comfortable area to walk around in with the shade of the trees. So even in the middle of the summer, it can be fairly pleasant, you know, compared to the sun, you know. Because what happens when there are no trees in the street? Oh, it gets hot, you know, you, your cement and everything absorbs the heat. The trees you radiate the heat away from them by transpiring the moisture. So it's a natural swamp cooler type of effect. How long have you been experimenting in your yard? Uh, since the late 60s, <laughs> you know, trying different trees. You know, like I say, the oranges and stuff like that, to try one is seven, eight years. Just to go from a seedling, okay, now you're getting fruit. All it took was seven or eight years, and then you, you get it. And this is going to be that uh, red or crimson colored on the inside. I mean, you've been a long time researching all this. Yeah, the experimenting and seeing what will work and, and stuff like that. Just because you love it? Or? Yeah. But do you want to make a change in how we... I get paid pretty well at work, but I just can't go out and get the good fruit like this. What's your job? Aircraft mechanic. Uh, we call it avionics. Look at that color. Isn't that yeah. great? Try that. <laughs> wow. The thing is, is we have to build the soil so that we can produce the material that we want. This is a compost pile. Oh, oh wow. There's a compost here too. Right. It's a huge compost pile. Oh my gosh. It's labor intensive. But do you want to make a change in how we do agriculture and, and urban agriculture? Is that part of your well, uh, mission? Well, experimenting and seeing what I can do. And so you've got a compost tea that's coming into this. So I take the pump I have over there, you know, for growing my own. When I had my own going, I really liked it. Yeah, but, you know. Yep. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. Yep. Mm. 